Droids and Wookiees, it's Anna, also known as the Star Wars Girl, and today I'm going to be talking about some exciting news. So remember like months and months and months ago when, or I should say like years ago now, or a year ago now, remember when they had D23 and Kathleen Kennedy's like, oh, I'm going to shock you all. Let's bring on Ewan McGregor. Yo, Ewan, what you got to say, bro? Kathleen, can you ask me in front of all of these people, all of these witnesses, can you please ask me, am I going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? Ewan? Yes? Are you going to play Obi-Wan Kenobi again? Yes. <laughs> When, you know, you get Ewan McGregor and it's going to be him on the desert and Tatooine. But then all of a sudden they're just like, oh no, uh, that plot, you know, Ewan McGregor, you know, watching over, you know, little, little Luke. That's kind of a very similar plot to the Mandalorian with Mando and Baby Yoda. So for whatever reason, even though she said the scripts were done, then she later came out saying the scripts were not done. And it just got postponed, and I don't know what the heck is really going on, because whenever they tell us stuff the next day, you know, they come out with new things that, you know, don't even match up with the things that came before. But so this news, with, uh, you know, Liam Neeson coming back to play Qui-Gon, now immediately, when this, when this whole Obi-Wan project was announced, my initial thought was, Okay, remember in Revenge of the Sith, when before Obi-Wan leaves and like says bye to Yoda and takes Luke to Tatooine, what does Yoda say? In your solitude on Tatooine, training I have for you. Training? An old friend has learned the path to immortality. One who has returned from the netherworld of the Force, your old master. Qui-Gon? How to commune with him, I will teach you. So, with the second that this show got announced, I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have Force Ghost Qui-Gon and, you know, teaching Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan's gonna have to, you know, deal with the failure because what happened in the end of Revenge of the Sith? He's standing over Anakin's, you know, burned you know, just chopped up bodies, crying, saying, you know, you were a brother to me, Anakin, I have failed you, and so Obi-Wan's got a lot of issues that he's got to deal with, because he's a very different person in the end of Revenge of the Sith than what we see him in A New Hope, and obviously he has learned in the original, you know, trilogy that he can come back as a Force Ghost, which is implied that he learned it from Qui-Gon, that Qui-Gon taught him this. So Liam Neeson did this interview with Collider, and in this interview with Collider, they asked him about, you know, would you be willing to come back? as Qui-Gon. Now, this this is a little snippet. It's not very long, so I'm going to play it for you guys, and we will discuss it once it's over. Twitter that I was going to talk to you, uh, one, I, I got a million tweets of people talking about Star Wars and asking him about Star Wars. Are you a little surprised at, at the fans still wanting you to return to play Qui-Gon in some way? I, I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't heard that at all. Oh, I, I've definitely heard it. Okay, uh, sure, I'd like to. I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering, is Star Wars starting to fade away from the cinema landscape, do we think? Actually, Disney Plus is launching like 10 series that are based on Star Wars, and one of them is uh, an Obi-Wan series with Ewan McGregor. Okay, and they're, they're sort of spin-offs, are they? Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna take place. See, I was wondering if Ewan had called you and said, um, hey, uh, I'm doing a spin-off series. Maybe we can do like a flashback. Sure, I'd be up for that. Yeah. I hope you get to return. I loved your work in Star Wars and I love your work and everything. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
Now, it seemed by that that either Liam Neeson really, you know, genuinely doesn't know about what's been going on and nobody's called him, kind of like uh, the interviewer said, like, oh, I'm surprised, like, Owen didn't call you immediately and tell you, like, yo, Liam, we're doing this Obi-Wan, like, spinoff show, and remember in Revenge of the Sith, like, Yoda said that more training I have and I'm, he's gonna teach me how to commune with you because you're the one that discovered how to come back from the nether realms of the Force, and that's probably what the whole show is gonna be about, which could be great, it could be about Obi-Wan and Kenobi coming to terms with his failure and you know, like Yoda said, let you need to learn to let go of everything that you fear, you know, or you're afraid to lose. And so it's him dealing with his failure and accepting that and, you know, growing as a human being as well as learning these other Force techniques from Qui-Gon. Especially since Qui-Gon is coming back from the dead to teach him. But based on that, it, it kind of seemed like either Liam Neeson was in the dark about it or he's playing it up. Because... When Kathleen Kennedy was talking, you know, before she announced Obi-Wan Kenobi and, you know, McGregor's coming back to play him, she said, oh, we had to walk around all of these lies and tell fibs and be quiet and, you know, deny that this was happening. So, I mean, he could be plain clueless here or it could be genuine. I'm not sure. Honestly... I'm, I'm terrified. I'm absolutely terrified of them ruining these characters. I'm absolutely terrified of them ruining Obi-Wan Kenobi and, you know, I, even more so Qui-Gon. It's like, I don't know, after what happened with, you know, Luke and Leia and Han and R2. R2 was turned off for three freaking movies and then when I saw him come back, I, I didn't realize how much I, you know, how much that would hit me when I watched the Mandalorian season two finale. But I mean, everyone's crying about Luke. Don't get me wrong. I cried about Luke too, but I was just bawling over, you know, R2-D2 coming back and I was like, oh my gosh. So I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's going to depend on who's in charge of it, but let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that he's, gen you know, Liam Neeson is genuinely clueless about this? Or do you think he's playing it up so that way if they announce anything? I, I mean, I don't know really what they would do with the Obi-Wan Kenobi show because that's what was implied at the end of Revenge of the Sith. But, I mean, some of these people that work on Star Wars movies have made it very clear that they've never even seen Star Wars. So, who knows what they're going to do. But let me know what you think about this in the comments. I got excited when I first saw it, but, I mean, you know... I love Star Wars, and I want it to do well, but I'm just scared of having, you know, The Last Jedi and, you know, somebody like Ryan Johnson going, hey, I'm going to subvert your expectations, go fuck you for two and a half hours, and then I'm going to, you know, just insult and belittle Mark Hamill in front of you in every single interview, hey, and I, I just don't want this to be like that, and, you know, I don't, I'm scared. I'm scared about it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. If you haven't already, take a minute and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell for notifications. That way you get notifications when I do other videos and live streams. Until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, and may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone! What's up, everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and I have an Etsy store, so if you've ever wanted to own a print of my artwork, this is the place to go. As you can see, I have a lot of recognizable characters, from horror films, to heroes, to Star Wars characters. Some of the notable characters I have on here are Darth Vader, which I did a couple live streams painting, so you can own a print of this painting. I also have Luke Skywalker, the binary sunset version, one of my favorite scenes in the original New Hope movie. I have Darth Maul, which Ray Parks himself actually complimented me on Instagram. And then last but certainly not least, Ahsoka Tano. So if you want to own any of these prints, go right on over to my Etsy store. Again, that's the art of Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. What's up everyone? I have a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799817. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.